For many households, a tiered rate system, where the cost per kilowatt hour increases as more electricity is used. This can quickly lead to high bills, especially during peak usage times. Some people have tried using two electric meters to separate their energy consumption, but this approach often fails to produce the desired savings. If this method doesn't work, what options remain? The answer, many hope, lies in solar energy. Analyzing solar energy's impact on bills. Grid-tied solar power systems are designed to offset electricity costs by generating power during daylight hours, hour during daylight hours, which is then used by the household or fed back into the grid. Theoretically, this should reduce electricity bills significantly, as solar-generated power displaces the need to buy electricity from the utility. However, the reality is that very few people manage to sell surplus electricity back to the grid. This is largely due to the fact that surplus electricity is only available when household consumption is low, typically during the day when people are at work or school, and when there is a demand for electricity in the grid. But utility companies generally do not face electricity shortages, as they often produce more than enough power to meet demand. They are already profiting from free energy sources like wind or hydroelectric power, so they have little incentive to buy small amounts of solar-generated electricity from individual households. The reason some people can still sell their solar power is due to the server systems that manage grid connections. These servers occasionally allow solar power to be fed into the grid, but the conditions for this to happen are not always favorable for the homeowner. If utility companies are already generating free energy, then it raises questions about the fairness of the system and whether consumers are being misled about the financial benefits of solar energy. The hidden costs of solar energy. Another significant issue with solar power systems is their cost. Installing a system that can operate independently and generate enough surplus electricity to sell back to the grid typically requires an investment of $3,000 to $5,000 or more. Over time, these systems degrade, requiring maintenance and replacement of components like batteries and inverters. After about 4 to 7 years, a solar system's efficiency can decline significantly, turning what was once a good investment into a burden. Consider this, each year, you may save around $1,000 on your electricity bill, but by the end of 5 years, you could lose $5,000 due to the system's declining efficiency and the ongoing costs of grid connection. If you spent $3,000 on the system initially, your net benefit might only be $500 after 5 years. Factor in maintenance costs of about $300 over that period, and your profit shrinks to a mere $200. These figures, while estimated, reflect the experiences of many users and experts in online forums and research studies. Is solar energy worth it? Given these challenges, one might conclude that solar energy isn't much different from buying electricity directly from the grid. While solar power systems can indeed be beneficial, they often become more of a hobby for enthusiasts than a reliable way to save money. The profit, usually just a few hundred dollars, comes at the cost of significant risk and inconvenience, particularly when using high-power devices during events like birthday parties or festivals, where even a $5,000 solar system may not suffice. Conclusion, the real cost of solar energy. While solar energy does offer some monetary benefits, they are often outweighed by the risks and inconveniences. Solar power is not truly a free source of energy, as many have been led to believe. The costs, both upfront and ongoing, as well as the system's lifespan, make it clear that solar energy is far from the effortless, cost-saving solution it is sometimes portrayed to be. This skepticism is not unfounded. After all, we've been conditioned to believe that nothing is free. However, consider the forces of nature, storms, tornadoes, that generate immense energy without cost. The universe, from matter to non-matter, is composed of the ether field. Atoms, which are dielectrics condensed from ether, and metal coils, can create energy from the tension within their atomic structure. This is a long story, but it suggests that there may be alternative, more effective ways to harness energy. For example, Nikola Tesla's radiant energy technology, based on ether principles, has been improved upon by electronic engineers for years, though it remains hidden from mainstream use. This technology represents a true free energy source, a stark contrast to the costly and limited benefits of solar power systems.